Could you imagine like how wrong you had it to have to like, yeah, be like wow, it was the global elite that were the kind people all along. Oh man, they were trying to show us the true way. That would be crazy twist, <laughs> the plot crazy twist. plot twist. What? <laughs> oh yeah. gosh. Yeah. All right. Weird. Well, here we are. Um, yeah. Welcome to our episode. We're doing a different episode today. Yeah, we're gonna try something a little different. Yeah. You want to explain, Brandon, the yeah. concept since so, mm -hmm. you're the mastermind behind I, this? I was the mastermind. Uh, you know, I feel like Paul and I love talking about a lot of story, and we get inspired by that oftentimes. That's something that we're really interested in. And so we said, you know what? Let's find something interesting and inspiring to discuss out of movies or, you know, just some kind of story of, of any kind, really. So today we picked a movie that we are... Are inspired by yeah. and uh, we've you know watched it we're just gonna kind of discuss sort of post analysis of our inspiration <laughs> from that and uh, the movie for today starting off this this segment is the Prince of Egypt what a movie dude what a movie <laughs> yeah did you see it when it first came out I mean I saw it years ago as a kid and then I watched it I don't know like a month ago and then oh, okay. you've, you obviously watched it recently too so i had to yeah, yeah he, weird. we forced him <laughs> for, he was forced it had been i do have a kind of a back burner of movies that i've that i always mean to go through and so that was on there so yeah. it wasn't a hard sell to, to get I, me to watch that honestly one. i mean i watched it a month ago and after i watched it i just felt like i could just watch it the next day like oh. i enjoyed it that much i don't know wow. i really liked it okay yeah was it the camel eating the guy's hair that really did it for you or what the camel was good <laughs> <clears throat> i think the music is amazing i really love the music um i i also just enjoyed and i didn't i mean i didn't know and i didn't care about this when i was younger but uh, being an adult <laughs> i think i felt extra impressed by the cast did you ever, did you look up the cast? I have, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's Val Kilmer as the voice of Moses and God, which yeah. I just, right there, I was like, hmm, what does that mean? <laughs> They're subliminally trying like, to tell us something. Yeah. But then, yeah, you had like Jeff Goldblum and Sandra Bullock and yeah. Danny Glover. And I mean, I don't know, you just you just had all, Patrick Stewart, you just had all these people. And I was like, what the heck, dude? Like, Yeah, Patrick these... Stewart was Seti, right? The, I think the, so. The Pharaoh, the original Pharaoh. Yeah, I think he was like the father Pharaoh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but it was just so interesting just who was doing what voices. Like, they brought all these people together to tell this tale. It was, I, was, I was pretty inspired by it. Yeah, because it came out in 98, right? Yeah, I think so. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean... The first thing that I kind of thought of as soon as it started was like, man, how far our culture has shifted in yeah. like 20 years, you know, or whatever, 20, I guess 25 years at this point, but yeah, wow, 25 years, geez. Yeah. It's yeah. But crazy. it's like the culture has shifted that much to be like, well, <laughs> actually I'll, I'll take that back. Culture has shifted. It's almost shifting back now. Like I could almost see another biblical movie being made at this point mm. rather than like seven years ago, for mm. instance. Mm. But um, there has been a big shift, I would say, like in culture overall. Yeah. Of like, wow, what a time when this was made where this was like a blockbuster, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. Like 25 years ago, it was acceptable to have all these top line, you know, all star cast mm -hmm. make a a bible story at like top production quality really really well done yeah whereas today i don't know if you would be seeing i don't know i don't know if hollywood would do that like i think one of the most recent hollywood bible stories was noah mm. with um, russell crowe right that's true which yeah. i don't know it was it was con i actually didn't see it so it was I controversial i don't know yeah. i feel like i heard a lot of people say that it was like good movie quality but like stupid story and not real and i don't know if i you know i, I heard weird things about it sure but uh i i mean i feel like with the rise of angel studios and the chosen and all the stuff that they're making right now you definitely yeah. see a a resurgence in terms of popularity with bible stories and definitely a rise in the quality mm -hmm. but i don't i don't know if hollywood would jump on the trend and be like, everybody's into this. We could make money. Like, let's do it. <laughs> or if they're, I don't know. I mean, it, it gets political at that point, but it's like, I don't yeah. know. I don't know if Hollywood would make another Bible movie. Probably not. Uh, Unless know. it was like, 
unless it fits some sort of like social justice kind yeah. of uh, motif, which I think you could argue even the the story de- did. You know, it's like hmm. I mean, what did you did you feel like there was a main theme to the movie? I I picked up on something that I thought that I thought. well yeah okay yeah so that was something I wanted to talk about was like what were the themes of the movie and mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about what are the themes of the movie that seemed like they stayed true to the Bible themes of the story and then what are themes that seemed like they were kind of added in do we agree with those themes or not I was kind of interested in that I don't know if I felt like there were any political themes that I could think of just trying to remember it off the top of my head. I felt like the one of the more interesting themes that I actually really enjoyed was the the brother theme mm-hmm. of you know the he you know you have Moses raised in Pharaoh's family yeah. for forty years mm-hmm. and there's this theme of him I'm having not this life. I'm just making sure the mic. <laughs> speaking of speaking of brothers and yeah, let's give let's go a little yeah. get a little distance here. Big step back. <laughs> um, but I, I actually really enjoyed that theme because I feel like even though you didn't get an explicit in the biblical story, I don't recall any really explicit detail about like, and Moses really had like a big conflict with his brother (laughs) and he was raised with him. And then he came back and his brother was Pharaoh and like, they had a real falling out after that. And it was a big bummer. Like, and Moses really struggled with that. It's like, yeah, like I don't remember anything in the Bible describing that, but I really enjoyed that because it felt like that was a a really great depiction of how it could have been. Yeah. Like it seemed realistic that that is a theme that's like, dude, that's totally something that could have been possible for Moses. You're raised in this royal family for 40 years. You disappear for 40 years and then you come back and you're like, I'd like to tear apart your family <laughs> empire. It's like, uh, <laughs> you know, like, no thanks. I think that's going to create some conflict, you know? <laughs> and it's like, I really enjoyed that theme. Yeah. So I don't know. That was a theme that I really liked. Uh, any themes that stood out to you? Yeah, I tried to like connect if there was like an overall theme to the whole movie, and to me, it seems like Deliverance was the mm. obviously the key yeah, theme, yeah, the key, the you know iconic they, song. Yeah, they start yeah. they start by singing it, wanting a deliverer. They end you know with singing about it as well, with that theme coming back, mm. and it's like the whole thing. You know, even in the middle, it's like she's sending him back, or he's you know saying he needs to, or she. Well, his wife Moses's wife is kind of sending him back to deliver the people. You know, mm. and saying like your people. Well, he's trying to convince them that they need freedom. Then she says, go deliver your people. Mm. So it's like, I think that's kind of the biggest overall theme. But yeah, the brother theme was cool too. I like that yeah. as well. No, I yeah, I would agree with you. Yeah, the big theme was deliverance. Which, yeah. which I And I think that that stayed with a biblical theme. Like Moses is this savior of the people. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of this Christ figure. Uh, to the nation of Israel. And so, yeah, I think they definitely kept a very biblical theme with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and for, I guess for me, like, for whatever reason, I don't care about that theme as much. I don't know why. <laughs> maybe because it just seems like we already know that theme or it seems cliche or I, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I don't, yeah. Yeah, it is weird. I don't know exactly why. Like, it should be a more profound theme, I guess, of just like... Mm. When you really think about deliverance and what that means, actually, your dad would like this episode. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's all about deliverance. Deliverance ministries, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think if you could see it, maybe, maybe I'm just not looking deep enough. Maybe if you see deliverance as something that's like not just physical, mm. but also like spiritual, mm. or you know, um, freeing you from like habits or addictions or patterns or things mm. in your life, it might feel more applicable to like this day and age mm. in some right, sense. Right, right. Yeah, what's the modern application? Because yeah, we, yeah we're not we're, slaves. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I yeah. mean, maybe s- slaves to Bezos, but that's a whole different thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> especially after Christmas, we're all slaves to Amazon right now. <laughs> kind of. Uh, oh there's my, my gosh. There's my Amazon blast for the day. <laughs> I've used up my one card. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's like. Yeah, maybe that's why it didn't hit as hard for me because I wasn't thinking about like a broader application of deliverance and I was only thinking like in a physical sense or whatever. Mm-hmm. So to me, it wasn't as relatable maybe in some way. Mm-hmm. But I think if you could see it as a spiritual deliverance or something like that, it could be, mm-hmm. to me, it, that's way more profound, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. that's not explicit in the story by any means. Mm-hmm. So. I think it's also interesting because in the... Like when you think about deliverance and you think about the person of deliverance from a Christian perspective, we think about Christ. 
But from a you know Jewish perspective, if you don't believe in Christ as the Messiah, then you're looking at Moses as like your iconic, you know, deliverer uh, uh, figure. I think I would imagine yeah. that you know you've got Abraham, who's kind of like the guy who started the faith, and then you basically have Moses as like the top prophet who gave you the law. Mm-hmm. And so Moses is kind of like one of your number one, your number one guy almost, yeah. you know, like yeah. Moses and David maybe. Yeah. And so I could see how this is like the origin story of the, the Jewish deliverer figure, you know, mm. I could see it, it being yeah. in that perspective. Which kind of makes sense why like Christ then references Moses, Moses quite a bit, you know? Yeah. Cause it's like, well, I'll one, I'll one up you. Here's the one better, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> here mm-hmm. I am. Yeah, and so, something better than Moses has arrived. Yeah, what? Who could be better than Moses? Crazy. Yeah, and that's where I see the spiritual deliverance coming into play too, because you know it's like Jesus was coming along to deliver people from everything, you know, mm-hmm. physical infirmity, spiritual infirmity, you know. And it's like, I think, I know for myself, it's just like seeing like transformative work in my life. It's like all the big deliverances come from like just certain like patterns of thinking, from certain you know like just craving food or you know just like different things that control your life in weird ways Mm. it's like you know whether it's maybe it's money or fear or whatever it's like all these things control your life in small little ways and getting deliverance from those impulses and like fears and whatever and cravings is like like that's freedom right there man that's Mm. like true deliverance Mm. so i think yeah that ultimate fulfillment of that pattern is pretty cool Yeah. yeah 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 do you feel like uh Jeff Goldblum needed some more lines in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yes, I did. I especially after I feel like Jeff Goldblum almost changed as an actor after um, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. I feel like he sort of changed his persona in his acting a little bit, mm-hmm. and I almost wish that he had been that type of person. <laughs> that like, but Moses. Yes, yes, but Moses, yes, but I am the Lord of whatever this place is. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's weird that they chose like cut him out of the whole story. Like, yeah. I mean, he was supposed to speak for Moses, right? Like, and so it's kind of weird that they just kind of glossed over the fact that Moses wasn't a good speaker. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. That was a <laughs> inaccuracy of the, they kind of like, See you later, Aaron. And yeah. they kind of just made Moses stay as the figurehead. Yeah. And really, it's like, well, it's actually kind of Aaron. And Moses was like the shy guy. Yeah. <laughs> you could almost weird? like remake Moses as almost like a a modern day introvert guy who works at a tech company. <laughs> oh my it's gosh. Like, well, te- te- technically, I just wanted to say that. Um, you know, like the guy from uh, Ready Player One. Remember, like the nerdy like CEO guy. Uh, Remember who was like, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. okay. He was kind of this, <laughs> it's kind of this like awkward tech giant guy. Sure. Anyway, actually, that was also in he Don't was look. he was the same. Yeah, in Don't Look Up, it's yeah. the same tech guy, same same actor. Oh, it is. Yeah, same actor from Ready Player One. Really? To Don't Look Up, that tech person. He's oh. the same guy playing the same type of role. Weird. Yeah, yeah. That's trippy. So, huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You almost have Moses as that kind of guy. <laughs> then I totally understand what it is. Yeah. yeah. And then Aaron being like the booming extrovert person. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 That's why I was like even surprised they cast. I mean, Jeff Goldblum can kind of be charismatic when he wants to be. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they didn't really give him any lines or anything ex- except like just being nervous and like trying to. Yeah. Like, I don't know. St- fumble over his words, I guess. Yeah, which is weird. <laughs> it's like, is she? I don't think of Aaron as that kind of guy. Yeah, and I think that's how Moses was. Aaron was the <laughs> yeah. like speaker of the people, you know. Yeah, they almost reversed them. Yeah, huh. yeah, that was kind of a weird character swap they did there. Yeah, yeah. Which of the songs do you like the best? You know, okay, I really love the "Look at Your Life Through Heaven's Eyes." I do. I really like that <laughs> song. I do. I was. I mean, I think Deliver Us and Look at Your Life Through Heaven's Eyes are the two best songs Mm -hmm. of the movie. And initially, I really liked Deliver Us because the singing is so good and it's just, it's such a powerful scene. It's so emotional and you see like the desperate plight of the people Mm -hmm. and then it almost becomes this like song of rejoicing in the end of the movie and it just was like, oh, like the emotion of it is like, ooh, it's so powerful. But I do feel like staying with a true 
Hebrew chiasm, <laughs> the the crux, the center point of like the change in the movie is when Moses goes to Jethro, yeah, and has the change of heart of like, I was a prince, I failed, I'm a worthless man, but wait, Jethro's like showing me that I am, I do have value if I like look to God, and it's kind of his, you know, in the in the best way a Hollywood movie could have somebody <laughs> kind of have this like moment of repentance and turning to God. Yeah. It's like, I think that's his like kind of coming to God moment mm-hmm. and like portrayed through a song, you know? Mm-hmm. And I do think that it's a beautiful song. And one of my favorite lines is it says in the song goes, um, let's see, I think he says like, when you have nothing, there's a lot to go around. Yeah, yeah. And it was this, I, you know, I just, I love that idea that like, yeah, you've got lots to share with everyone when you have nothing, you know, because, <laughs> you know, it's not about stuff anymore. Yeah. And I think I really enjoyed that perspective of like, you used to be the prince who had everything. Now mm-hmm. you have nothing. And now that you have nothing, you finally have something to share with people, which is like God's message to Pharaoh and the people. You know? Yeah. Yeah. The whole story, I mean, the, well, specifically how the movie even portrayed it. It's like, I mean, the original story, obviously is great symmetry too, but just this telling of it as well. It has good symmetry probably because it's based off a good story, but yeah, (laughs) you know, it's like, you know, you have like the, the Prince part, the wilderness part, and then like the changed person, it's like the hero's journey, like perfectly Mm -hmm. encapsulated Mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. like, you know, even the wilderness being the underworld or all that kind of stuff where Jethro is, you know, it's like, and then you go up to the mountain even and like talk to God. And it's like, dude, everything just, like if you were to draw it out on a graph of even like elevation in the story of like yeah. where people are and like, you know, he's kills the Egyptian, he's down in the sand, you know, mm-hmm. and then he's over here and then he's at his lowest, you know, and the people are like throwing mud at him and then he's back up here at the end, you know, and it's just like, it just all curves together, like yeah. a mountain in the middle and speaking to God in the middle. And yeah, that's, yeah. The symmetry is pretty amazing. Yeah, I know. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. You know, it's another, another, little story arc that happens is when he sorry i'm just thinking of a funny question to ask you okay all right hold on to it (laughs) yeah please when he discovers that he's a hebrew and kind of comes to realization with that and then he goes into the archives and like sees Mm -hmm. pharaoh throwing the babies in Mm -hmm. and then you know conveniently pharaoh's like right there you know just like coming out of the dark <laughs> like i did it like, all <laughs> like i i've been waiting here for you to realize this i come here every night like waiting it's, it's like okay you just like came out of the shadows like ready for me it's like that was weird but he comes out of the, here would have tipped you off <laughs> <laughs> yeah i thought you would have noticed you looked different um but you curly you know, beard and we're all clean shaven <laughs> he, he comes out of the shadows and moses is like you know how could you like how could you like throw the babies in there and it's like, that's weird that you'd even like record that. Like, oh, yes, this is when we killed all the, the <laughs> little baby children, you know? Like, we're proud of that. It's part of the history. Yeah. It's pretty dark for a kid's movie. Super. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, you see that, especially when you see it come back later with his brother's son who's standing. Did you, did you remember that scene? Because later on, when you get to the like last plague that's about to be done, mm-hmm. and Moses goes to the temple and has this conversation with his brother. Mm-hmm. whose name was, what was it, Ramesses? Yeah, Ramses. I think it's like Ramesses. <laughs> I don't know if it was actually Ramses or Ramesses. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, but he goes and has a conversation with him, and they're like kind of arguing in the temple, and like his little young son mm-hmm. like comes over to them and like has a torch in his hand, and he's standing with his back up against the mural, mm-hmm. and he's literally at the bottom where all the babies oh, are yeah, dying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember and it's that? this yeah. imagery that's like... Foreshadowing, Oh, yeah. my gosh, and Moses is like dude, don't do this. Yeah. It's like, can you not see? Do you not see what's going to happen right here? Yeah. And it was like, ooh, that's so powerful. I, yeah, I do remember. But the, the theme that I, or the little arc, story arc that I was trying to talk about was you have Moses in the beginning realizing he's a Hebrew. He goes and sees the mural. This is our history. This is what happened. His, you know, adopted father, Pharaoh, comes up behind him. And he's like, how could you do this? And he's like, oh, Moses, they're just slaves. It's okay. Sacrifices must be made. Yeah, sacrifices (laughs) must be made. And it was just this, like, the realization that Pharaoh devalues this whole portion of humanity. And then from that moment on, you know, you get Moses basically going back to his duties and then him, like, hearing, like, the cries of the people. You know, like, he, he, like, notices the whips that are being struck and he, like, hears... 
the people crying and then that's when he like hears the voice of the person who's like getting beaten to death and he goes and like stops him you Whereas know? before he could tune all that out before it's like he wasn't even aware of it and now suddenly he's like i see the humanity that's like weeping before me yeah you know like it's i'm like not a blind perspective to it. shift yeah because it's like as soon as he realizes that like these are my people like mm-hmm. i am these people then there's that realization of like they're suffering and i don't want them to suffer yeah you know, like they're not just slaves anymore you know hmm. i thought that was such a great sort of shift that they made it was it was kind of subtle but i really liked that i think that's why people like say you know um you know there's different ways to look at it but you know seeing your fellow man as like you know either created in the image of god like the same as you or you know finding you know finding your humanity in common or whatever it's like all these different things or you know you can go more hippie with it and say we're all one or so you know things like that different ways of saying that but that ultimately like if you really embrace that philosophy or understand it it's like you can't really be cruel to another person without like being cruel to yourself you know in yeah. some way yeah. um if you truly believe like people are the are of one stock you know yeah. to some extent if we're all made out of the same metachlorians then <laughs> you can't cut them down with a lightsaber yeah <laughs> it's true <laughs> unless they're sick then you can do whatever you want to them unless their metachlorian count is so low that they don't even exist <laughs> you don't have any metachlorians inside of you <laughs> yeah you wouldn't get mad at me for smashing a rock would you <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then you get the weird yeah, eugenic stuff. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pull back from it. All right. So what was your weird question that you were gonna it has ask? Has to do with me? eugenics. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, kinda. Of, well not really. <laughs> Only tangentially. Um dude, I didn't like any of the like Israelite characters. Oh really? Yeah. I felt like they're all kind of lame. I thought all the Egyptians were super interesting. But like I was trying to, yeah, I don't know. They're just like they're always just like complaining or like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Which, I mean, obviously they're slaves. They have a lot of reason to complain. But they're just like such whiny people. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's oh, foreshadowing man. for the rest of the Old Testament too. But <laughs> being a little stiff necked and I mean, yeah, like I guess you had, you know, Aaron, yeah. and Miriam. Miriam's a little bit annoying yeah. in that she kind of. You know, she's like when she first bumps into Moses, kind of in the back alley thing. Yeah. And she realizes it's him. And then she's all like, it's you. Like, you've come to deliver us. Like, we knew you'd come. And he's like, what the heck are you talking about? And Aaron's like, what? Like, <laughs> like he doesn't know what you're talking about. And he yeah. just thinks you're a crazy person. And then it's like she jolts his memory with a little song and whatever. And it's like, yeah. you know, unless there was the song restoring his memory, then, you know, it would be like crazy person like yeah torture you or whatever like go to <laughs> go to slave prison or something you know <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah they, they were just like i don't know they're always just moaning through slavery or mm-hmm. like which again it's you have every right, right to yeah or they're you know like throwing mud at moses so they're like saying like ah, oh, we're doubting you or yeah you know it's like they're not really like noble characters yeah. you know it's like mm. i don't know <laughs> there's not like really that much redeeming yeah which maybe that's part of the maybe, story I, I feel like that's kind of it yeah you know? like it would almost feel inaccurate to the biblical story <laughs> if they were these totally wonderful innocent perfect people yeah that you just loved and adored every one of them yeah it was like ah, oh, these people are worth saving like they should be <laughs> saved yeah it'd and be s- like the lorax or something you know yeah and it's like why are you chopping down the lorax's trees that's yeah. maybe not a great analogy but but <laughs> Yeah, it's like because they're people who it's like, oh, they're almost annoying. Like, yeah, you know, it makes it almost all the more significant that Moses arose out of them. Yeah. That like, oh, here's this like totally awesome dude who just like is going to save you. Yeah. Through God's power. And you guys, you know, I mean, you shouldn't be slaves like you're. Yeah. You, you didn't deserve that, but you're also not like super awesome. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah. Which I think people have like, uh, oh man, I'm going to get in trouble on this podcast, but like, I don't know. I think people do have like some sort of elevated reverence for Jewish people, hmm. especially a lot of Christians, which is fine. I mean, like they obviously have a lineage, you know, God and all this kind of stuff, but mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I don't know, there's there's some weird, like, idolization that happens, I feel like, in looking at the Old Testament for mm-hmm. a lot of people, where it's like, oh, man, these were, like, the chosen people, so they're, like, 
they're just superior in every way or something, you know. Mm. But you definitely don't see that in the, this movie, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I've I've heard different people's philosophies about this before. Like, like why is it that the Jewish ethnicity, the Jewish group of of humanity, has is God's chosen people? Mm-hmm. You know, like is it because they they er- earned it, or like you know Abraham earned it or deserved it somehow? Or maybe it's the opposite. Maybe it's that it's like out of all the groups of humanity that will ever arise throughout human history, they were the least likely to <laughs> obey God correctly. And so God yeah. was like, I choose the least worthy to be my people. To So, yeah. it's so you know, because it's like if you did pick the people who are the most worthy, it would almost seem as though it's like you can earn it or like deserve yeah. it, you know. That so is, it's like That is interesting. A book I'm reading right now actually – uh, it's called like the arena, but basically it's, um, it's presented as science fiction mm-hmm. where there's like race of aliens battles it out. And then like their, their alien leader, God, you know, basically like imprisons the demons and they're like, well, that's not fair. It's like, we didn't know any better. And God's like, well, I'm going to, I'm going to show you, I'll take these humans and I'm going to like test them in this arena basically. And if they can do it, then you have no excuse basically. No way. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, kind of, were the test subjects for the justification of another alien species? Kind of, yeah. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> but people are pulled off Earth into this arena, oh, okay, okay, so they get like a okay. second, like a second life or whatever okay, gotcha. in this arena. But yeah, and so then, yeah, so basically, like, the people are there to kind of like shame the demons. Wow. <laughs> and be like, well, dude, if these like pitiful little things can do it, then you guys like suck. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Wow. So. Wow. Um, yeah, so that, that just made me think of that, where it's like, you know, kind of putting your, yeah, if, if it is the most unlikely, that seems like, that yeah. does seem like how God would do it, to be yeah, honest. It's, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's just, I've just, I, I don't even remember where I heard that from. But, yeah. But it didn't come from me. <laughs> um, no, and I think, uh, you know, and I mean, another good example is like the story of Jonah when he goes to Nineveh, and he does like bare minimum effort, and it's just like, <laughs> eh, repent, or 40 days, you're all going to die. Uh, and they're like, oh, let's all repent. And they all, like totally turn from their sins. And it was like, wow, that was like really easy. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, but then other prophets other... are out there for like 40 years outside Jerusalem. Like, yeah. you got to repent. Like, and they're like, yeah, we'd just rather worship a golden calf or like, you I know. know. Then you have Jeremiah being yeah. like, well, that sucks. <laughs> Wish I could add Nineveh. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. Like, I tried really hard. Yeah. Like, they didn't want it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh yeah bemoaning israel oh, you know man. downfall for like centuries there was this movie <laughs> um i watched years ago and i i can't remember what it was called but it had peter o'toole and it was an uh, it was a movie about how rome conquers israel with the maccabean revolt mm. and it was called was it called medusa uh, Methuselah? no not methuselah i think it was called medusa something Hmm. like that but it's like a little it was like a little city in israel that was like up on a cliff edge or something okay and because it was kind of on top of this like cliff plateau the romans couldn't get to them and they Mm. had like a little spring and their own gardens they were totally fine so they just like sieged it out yeah then like years went by and the romans slowly built like a a dirt (laughs) ramp from like the ground up to this thing so they could put a siege ramp and like attack them oh wow and when they got up there the whole town just like committed suicide and killed themselves and apparently this is where the historian josephus came from because apparently he was there in the town and decided not to kill himself and allowed the romans to capture him and then like became a historian and (laughs) sort of sided with the romans or whatever but there's this great scene in at least in the movie where the the like leader of the town is having a meeting with the captain of the Roman army mm-hmm. and they're talking to each other trying to work out like a peace negotiation and he has some conversation with him where he's like if you wanted to conquer Israel you all you had to do was leave our land and we would all just kill each other and it's like <laughs> you know the only reason that we're being so troublesome to you is because you've given us a reason to unite to fight you got a common enemy it was, yeah it was like if you if you just left us alone like you could have just clean come in and cleaned up the mess after we like fought yeah. each other you know and it was like like the roman guy didn't get it but you know it was, yeah or waited till yeah they sinned and god let someone come in and take them over right i guess right. it kind of did with the romans anyway yeah so. yeah uh, yeah it's just so easy to like have infighting you know yeah, yeah. so anyway moses is definitely uh uh you know, standalone character of, yeah. you know, but I mean, he was, 
you know, on he had a different, you know, uh, diff- totally different life. You know, I mean, he was raised by Egyptians. Yeah. And then he fled to the wilderness and then had like a really crazy God experience, you know. And so it's like he, he went through some stuff that changed him. Yeah. Know? Well, I thought the Midianites were super cool. Like they were, yeah. they were like the best people there, you know. Dancing, like... <laughs> you know. Yeah. Jolly. Free spirits. Jolly Santa Claus guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With eligible daughters, you know. Dude, it's like what a whole stock of yeah. stock of ladies. What do you what more do yeah. you need, you know? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's like <laughs> I always wonder about that, you know, and it's the idea of, you know, going out to the wilderness and it's like I think more people need to do that, you know, because like that was that was a big difference between Moses and the rest of the Israelites. It's like they didn't go out in the wilderness and come back, you know? Yeah. Like they didn't get that transformational moment. You know, they were just kind of in the monotony day in, day out of everything. Well, okay, wait. <clears throat> yeah. Yes and no. Yeah. Because Moses went out like he was prince of Egypt for 40 years, goes out in the wilderness for, for 40 years, has his moment with God comes back a changed man and like does something amazing Mm -hmm. the nation of israel goes out into the wilderness has a moment with god but they totally freak out about it worship a calf don't really follow god at mount sinai and then god's like you know okay i'm going to take you to the land of israel he takes them over there and they're like we don't trust you there's giants in the land and then he's like now go wander in the wilderness for 40 years yeah they had the same experience as moses but moses had the wilderness first and then met with God afterwards. Whereas the children of Israel met with God first and got like the fulfillment of their promise first, but then they basically rejected God and rejected the promise. And then they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And it's like, you're almost gonna like, it's like, you're gonna have to wander in the wilderness for 40 years, but maybe, (laughs) maybe you need to wander in the wilderness first in order to actually appreciate the promise of getting out of the wilderness and like what God has to offer. You know, I could see that it's kind of a weird thing to think about. I mean, just, yeah, even in my own life, it's like after, yeah, after you experience something miserable, it's like everything that comes after that's like pretty awesome. You know, you're like, yeah. well, it wasn't as bad as that thing I experienced. So I'm yeah. actually pretty stoked. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. Okay. I'm very thankful right now. And it's like people from the outside might look at it and be like, oh, you're lacking. You're like, no, no, I've been lacking. Like this is, <laughs> this is actually pretty great, man. Yeah. So, yeah, once you're in the wilderness for a while, you just, you reach an oasis and you're like euphoric. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. Oh, finally. So yeah. There's even, water. Even the simple things, yeah, then become kind of uh, worth having, which yeah. is cool. Totally. Yeah. What did you think about the the background art of the movie? I loved, I loved all the art. I yeah. loved all the artistic depictions. I loved, yeah, I yeah. thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, the background artists weren't getting paid enough, man. Oof. Yeah, I know. Like the characters were pretty like simple, which is fine, but yeah. the backgrounds were the just scenes, like. scenes, the, you know, you see like Pharaoh standing with the background <laughs> of like his own statue behind it. And, yeah, like pro- know, profile and profile. Profiling. I mean, just, yeah, a lot of the angles and the imagery they did was like magnificent. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah, and like you mentioned that scene yeah. with the kid, you know, with the crocodiles, like standing there with the torch, the sun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like stuff yeah, like that. Exactly. Good, good, uh, it's really good. Good art direction. Yeah. And they always had, you know, the Egyptians were like in cool greens and cool blue lighting. Mm-hmm. And then like the Hebrews and whatever were always like in red lighting or orange lighting. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. So, they did change a lot of that lighting like that. Yeah. So even when you see like at the end when the sea closes and Ramses is like on the rock and Moses is on the rock, Moses is in like red lighting and Ramses is in like dark blue lighting. Yeah. So, I, I read somewhere. So I don't know if this is totally true, but I read you read on, it. It must I, be true. I read it on a random thing on Google that <laughs> they, um, the animators spent, I think, like two years. There was a, there was a separate animation team that spent like two years just animating the scene of them walking through the Red Sea. Oh, that wow. was like their one project. Hmm. Which it's like you know, twenty five years ago, you didn't have as much software as we have today. I'm sure people could do it a lot faster today, but back then, it's like, whoa, you spent a lot of time yeah. making that one scene. That's crazy, you know? Yeah, trying to get all those waters, like the water physics, animated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was a pretty crazy scene. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and then they, um, <laughs> the shark like <laughs> swimming alongside it. Yeah, the get like some little thunder lightning going back and a little outline of some yeah. kind of underwater creature there, you know? 
Yeah, it'd be like the world's best aquarium experience. Seriously, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you just get to walk on, like, dude, on the sea floor. Insane aquarium right here. Yeah, yeah, I know that would be pretty wild. Yeah, did you think the? How do you think the angel of death was? It's was pretty. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah, it definitely. It was. I think what was interesting is that, you know, it was this sort of wispy cloud thing. It's always a wispy cloud. It's always a wispy cloud. I mean, even in um, <laughs> Ten Commandments, Char- yeah, Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston, I think it was like a wispy cloud thing. It was like a black smoke, but Some, yeah, yeah, something. And um, so you know, wispy cloud, totally fine. That's the angel of death. I thought it was interesting how it's like you heard the, <sighs> yeah. like the breath come out, and it was like they're dead. Yeah, and That's super creepy. Super <laughs> creepy, right? It was like whoa, you just like sucked the air out of people. You like sucked the breath of life out of them. That's so creepy. Yeah, but I think it was also interesting how. It almost felt like it was it had like eyes and was looking. It's like it'd kind of come up to a doorway and then be like, "Nope, okay, go somewhere else." It's like I'm looking and I, I like smell the blood. Yeah, I, don't know, I was almost getting like a little Nazgul vibe, <laughs> where you're sort of this like faceless entity that's just like sniffing around for stuff. Yeah, you know, it's like, Ooh. <laughs> or if you'd seen Lost, the black smoke monster that goes around. And oh, I haven't seen that. Smashes things up, but yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it is pretty. Yeah, it was pretty intense. Like, yeah. I'm surprised. I mean, I'm sure there's lots of kids that are scarred from that movie. But <laughs> <laughs> like, is the is the angel of death gonna get me tonight, mom? Yeah, like, right. No, it's okay. Yeah. I put the blood on the door. Wait, <laughs> lamb kidding. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, even like that one scene where like the kid walks in the door and then like the smoke, yeah. the smoke goes in after him and his like arm falls out the door. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like whoa, whoa dude. <laughs> like, it's like a Jurassic Park scene or something. Yeah. It's like gonna yeah. turn the corner and there'll be like an arm that falls down <laughs> right yeah oh man yeah it was yeah <laughs> yeah yeah one yeah. one theme i guess going back to themes that i i think is i mean i'm sure it's almost almost impossible to you know kind of portray in an animation like that but the idea of the, like the the plagues being the counter to like the all the egyptian gods yeah yeah like i always wish i don't know a good way to portray that but it'd be kind of interesting to see more of that yeah where it's yeah like, they went through the plagues pretty quick yeah kind of montaged them yeah you know but it would be cool if the plagues were a longer story yeah that would be cool because they even kind of hinted at it a little, well Maybe not fully, but you know, when the magician gods are like singing their song, you the know, power of Ra, <laughs> yeah, with the big boys now, yeah, yeah. and they're kind of naming off all their gods, you know, like mm-hmm. one after the other. And uh, I thought that song was kind of cool, yeah, but they're like yeah. doing all like the different like symbols and showing all the different Egyptian gods and stuff, but yeah. I don't, yeah, it didn't seem to play more of a role than that, yeah, as far as like their mythology goes or anything. I, I thought it was really interesting how when they're singing their song and they're like, you're, you know, you're playing with us and like all of our gods are super powerful. And then they show the shadow <laughs> of the snake eating the other two snakes. Yeah. And it's like, uh, <laughs> like his God just did a miracle that totally killed your little miracle. And then yeah. you're singing about how your God is big. And he's like a little prophet guy who's playing yeah. with the big boy prophet people now. Yeah. It's like, Hmm, that was interesting. <laughs> that was some good, some good visual. <laughs> Yeah, he should have been paying attention instead of singing. Yeah. <laughs> like, see what just happened over there? It's yeah. Kind of a, I feel like that was sort of a bad omen for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is trippy. Yeah, I heard, well, I've heard a lot of theories on that, but yeah. <sighs> but, I mean, it was just, I always wonder about like someone like Moses where it's like so many miraculous things happen in your life, like one after the other. It's like, does that ever just become normal for you? You're like, yeah, my snake, my rod just turned into a snake. No big deal. Like I'm yeah. used to it by now. You know, do you yeah. ever get like used to the miracles or is it like surprising each time it happens? I always wonder about that. <laughs> oh, Cause man. like, yeah, you could maybe like, I, like, I wonder if his staff could turn into a snake after that, or if that was like the, oh, the one and only time it really turned into a snake, you know? Yeah, probably. Like, maybe. Yeah. I mean, miracles seem to always like kind of. And that's the other amazing thing about miracles. They never seem to happen like the same way twice, which is mm. kind of weird. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it obviously points to an infinite God who has you know, infinite ways of accomplishing his purposes on earth. But um, yeah, it's always like, I just wonder if people get like miracle fatigue, like, oh man, I need my staff to walk today. And now it's a snake. Oh man, God, like, come on. <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. You know. I mean, I almost feel like that's <laughs> what happened to Moses when he struck the rock at mm. the end of his life. 
because it's like he was frustrated with the people, wasn't totally following God. It's just like, all right, let's just pump this miracle out and like ugh, be done with this thing. And people are whining at me again. Ugh, like just water, come out of the rock. No, it's that darn rock. Come on, work rock. You know, yeah. It's like, Didn't it spit out water when he hit it though? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Which I is think, weird that God even allowed for that to happen. Yeah. But Yeah, I know. It's like, <laughs> it's it's almost like he... You know, like, all right, well, if you really want it, like, you can have it, but... Yeah, it's the wrong way to go about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I gave you the power to do this miracle, and, like, it's going to work, whether whether you do it with a good attitude or not, because I gave it to you, but, like... <laughs> yeah, you're misusing the power at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, that was a good movie, man. Yeah, Thanks Prince of Egypt. There you go, people. Rec- recommendation, yeah. Yeah. I hope it inspires you, and you rewatch it and appreciate all the fun parts about it yeah and next week i'm gonna pick something super weird for brandon <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so so stay tuned for that yeah find the symbolism and i don't know I'll, yeah yeah, yeah. I'll think about it yeah leave us comments let us know if you like this segment if you thought this was interesting if you want more movies or stories that you think would be cool but oh, yeah. uh just other stuff that inspires you that we can talk about we're just trying to you know, help folks observe more inspirational things in the world around them. So let us know. Absolutely. As always, thank you for your attention and until next time. Peace out. <laughs>